Hey everyone, thanks for being here and watching my presentation. My name is Orhan Sayan and I'm the director and also the 3D lead artist of Cream Studio. And our studio is located in Istanbul and we create motion graphics and also 3D projection mapping shows as well. So, before anything else, I would like to say many thanks to the Maxon family for having me here and I'm really excited to share some of the techniques I use in my day-to-day -day work and I hope you guys will find it useful too. So, uh, so uh, the main theme of my presentation is creating complex looking scenes with simple techniques. The first thing I want to share with you is my camera rig and it's incredibly easy to build and control and we will create some dynamic camera animation with just only a few, few keyframes key and following that I will share one of my favorite tricks which is about instancing alembic caches and we will reach hundreds of millions of particles and without even having any particle in scene so um, another thing I want to mention is uh, controlling ver vertex map animations with uh, particles. So we will create basic particle system which will affect and drive our vertex map animations which will allow us to reveal some objects or delete some polygons uh, in an organic way. And uh, for the last thing of my presentation, uh, I will be breaking down some uh, really basic scenes from our uh, Galata Tower projection mapping experience. And uh, I will try to share some 3D projection mapping tips and tricks. And that's all. Yeah, I hope it will be fun. So, before diving into the details of my presentation and to give you a little bit more background about our studio and the things we do here. Uh, I want to show our showreel first and then we will continue. So this was our motion graphic reel and hope you guys are enjoy it. If you want to learn more about our projects and Cream Studio, please visit creamstudio.tv. And yeah, before moving any further, uh, I like to give a little bit more information about myself, my background and my journey into the creative field. So I studied journalism and graduated from the Istanbul University at 2011 uh, as a young journalist candidate. But I never worked on any television channel or any newspaper as a journalist at least. Uh, because during my education at the communication faculty, I guess it was like my third year or so, I realized, I started to realize that I was more into visual side of the communication and uh, visual communication design, digital arts and CGI especially were qu quite attractive for me and immediately after graduating from the university, I start working on a variety of different production sets, such as movie sets and uh, the television commercial sets and being part of a crew and being part uh, outside of the office you know, on different locations and that was quite fun, uh, like three years or, or so I worked uh, on many different production sets and but there was al always something is something something was missing and you know the, the piece of that piece of the puzzle 
wasn't there and I, I, was, I can feel it because I wasn't creating anything and digital arts quite charming and quite fascinating for me and one day I woke up and said to myself I never forget that day I guess one of the turning points of my life was that day I said to myself okay you will learn 3D and it will start now I start making some research about the 3D softwares what's out there and it was 2015 I guess five years ago my uh, <clears throat> my journey started and it was an interesting day for me I never forget that feeling uh, I somehow downloaded the 3D application and the this design of it the interface of it was really otherworldly it was incredibly scary and complicated and there was a familiar object I just clicked it and wow suddenly there was a cube and I can rotate it I can scale I can manipulate the, a 3d object in my computer that feeling that the idea of uh, controlling 3d objects uh, without any limitation uh, quickly became an obsession for me I'm uh, while working on the set while traveling with friends I was one part of my brain was thinking about uh, that software and learning new things every day everything was a challenge for me like six months or so I started to struggle and lost my way and my one of my friends said you know there is another 3d application and called cinema 4d you should try it because this software is seems really uh, complicated and cinema 4d has incredible incredibly user-friendly design and uh, you will love it give it a chance and and I did I six months or so from the zero point I switched to the cinema 4d and everything start to accelerate I became more productive and that switch is kind of another turning point in my life and uh, suddenly uh, my hobby became my main profession profession and start working on as a freelancer in many different uh, studios in Istanbul and like at 2018 me and my dear friend Hazal Koyuncuoğlu collaborated together and we launched Cream Studio things are still accelerating and quite every project is quite fun and challenge for us and learning new things every day still feeling that same excitement uh, like it's our first day and I hope I know many of you guys can feel wh what I'm talking about and I hope none of us will never lose that ex ex that feeling that excitement which will drive us further and yeah uh, th th this is the general uh, story of uh, my journey and I think uh, I'm one of those lucky people I consider myself lucky because I turned my hobby into my main profession uh, which creates a feeling uh, it's like I, I'm not working because uh, I'm having fun and that's uh, there is no price for it and I know many of you can feel what I'm talking about all right let's not lose any more time and jump into cinema 4d and create some amazing stuff today the first thing I want to share with you guys is my camera rig system which uh, I found it quite useful and handy and I use almost in every project so uh, I compiled some of the example animations from our previous works to give you a, an idea about what we are after and yeah let's dive into cinema 4d and create the exactly same system all right uh, I just set up a basic scene with primitive shapes I just throw the cubes into the distance so we can feel the rotation of the camera and also the uh, scale of the scene and yeah this is our basic camera rig to give you an overview about the general dynamic and the motion of the camera and 
yeah, it's quite it feels quite organic. Uh, okay, I will delete our rig and let's create from scratch. First, I want to create a, a cube and I will re scale it down and also rename it as my target object. And I will also create a circle spline and let's quickly change its rotation to the X and Z. And also, I will create a camera and I will put cinema for the tags, align to spline tag, and also target tag to my camera. So, before moving any further, I want to uh, or organize my scene a little bit and press Alt G on my keyboard so I will rename it as my camera rig. Okay, let's put camera and the target object under our rig. And for the target slot of the target object, I will put our cube. And for the supply path, I will use our circle object. Oops. And yeah, like so. So I will adjust our camera position, maybe something like this. And Basically, what I want to do is uh, just create two states for the circle spline. One, uh, the first state will be at our frame zero, and I want it to be like really close to my to my object. And I will just put a keyframe on our radius parameter of spline object, and also the rotation of it. So. At the end of our timeline, I want to be far away from the, uh, our target object, and I want also rotate around maybe here. Yeah. I will put another keyframe to the rotation and the radius of my spline. Also, I want to adjust my target object, and at frame zero, I want it to look a little bit down and I will just press up, uh, put a keyframe of the y-axis at frame 0 and maybe at the end of our timeline it will be a little bit uh, higher and yeah let's adjust the tangents and <clears throat> for the circle of the rotation, I want it to be start really quick and, and uh, same for the radius also, yeah, something like this will work, I guess, maybe like so, all right. I will also adjust the, my uh, target's Y uh, keyframe. And I will be creating similar tangent animation like so, yeah. And voila, we have our camera ready. Okay. And to make it a little bit more interesting, I will put, I will little bit play with the uh, tangents uh, and maybe style of the shot will enhance a little bit and yeah it will start really quick slow down and again zoom out quickly we created something this organic just under five minutes or so and i think it's a quite handy technique and I hope you guys find it useful too. So uh, let's watch some similar animations from our previous works again and then we will continue. The next thing I'm excited to share with you is this part particle vortex systems and we will break down some scene files and also I will demonstrate how to 
build same system uh, from scratch and let's start all right we have a fairly basic scene here nothing too fancy just a um, helix object and this helix I use as a emitter object in X particle system also as you can see there is just a few modifiers vortex modifier and to create some variation I use two different turbulence modifiers and speed I also limit the speed of the particles with speed modifier and for the emitter of our system and um, I use helix object as an emitter object and I also emit from the edges also uh, when you check the emission the birth rate is kinda uh, we can consider it really low just around 122 or particle birth second and yeah with this setup uh, as you can see I also made some initial state because I don't want to uh, wait to fill the whole helix uh, with particles and with that initial state as you can see there is a uh, really low particle count just 13,000 around 14,000 particles and yeah this is uh, kind of basic scene basic uh, setup of our alembic uh, particle vortex thingy all right to continue I want to first make uh, create a cache object X particle cache and I want to cache the internal memory because if you don't want to uh, if you do, do not catch cache your simulation uh, before baking as alembic it, it, it won't work you know uh, the alembic cache requires whole X particle system cached before anyway just I will just build this cache and <coughs> it's done yeah right now we we baked and cached our particles and but I want uh, some geometry uh, generated over the particles and I use X particle generator for it and the most important thing about this trick is uh, using pyramid object pyramid primitive uh, to generate over the particles because the pyramid is the only uh, geometric object which cl cl creates closed volume uh, with minimum polygon count there's just only four polygons and other every every primitive has more polygon face than uh, the pyramid object so I will activate my generator and pyramid object immediately everything start to uh, become laggy and the viewport is as you can see I can't even rotate around it and there is only just a 13,000 particle but lots of polygon mesh generating generated over the particles and if you want more particles like this uh, it, it won't work you know uh, the particle system will be heavier and the move moving trying to rotate around the scene will become harder and harder so to get rid of this problem I will bake alembic caches over only our generator generator item uh, is selected I will move to the file export and export it as alembic and I will just continue and I will bake only use to 125 frames or so no need to be longer for the demonstration purposes and one of the important things to mention in here selection only should be ticked and because we don't want uh, any other object uh, baked as alembic and also the merge generated should be uh, activated and I will press ok and all right our alembic cache is done and I will just drag and drop it over here press ok to import it and I will just click to a random frame to check everything is working or not and yeah right now the slowing of the viewport is not an issue anymore and we can freely rotate and move inside our scene and yeah we will continue instancing 
alembic caches and th that's the where, where the magic happens and I will just move a little back and I will ro rotate it to create a feeling of the va variation all right it's it looks much better now but why we stop here uh, so we can create another instance of the instance uh, and move a little bit back maybe rotate it again to create more variation and also scale it up a little bit I don't know maybe like so yeah it looks much more uh, much more complicated uh, if you think about there's only just 14,000 particle at the initial uh, alembic cache and our viewport is still really uh, fluidy and there is no lagging issue slowing down of the viewport render is still not here and uh, let me show you uh, a scene where I kept iterating the same logic instance in the alembic caches over and over and over and over again oh my god I really love looking at the this scene you know there is initial particle count was 14,000 but right now we have let me check it I will press ctrl I on the keyboard and it says there's 46 objects in the scene like right now we have millions of polygons and still our viewport is not uh, showing any signs of slowing down and yeah this, I found it quite useful in if you create something like uh, vortex kind of stuff like this and oh my, oh my god uh, check the details of it and there is no any sign of the slowing down of the viewport okay uh, why we stop here <laughs> the, so just make an another instance of the whole system of instances you know just I will choose the root of it and I will create one more duplicate of the whole system oh and yeah as you can see there is still no sign of any viewport slowing down and there is hundreds of millions of polygon and maybe thousands of millions of particles in the scene that's really I found this quite powerful and interesting and uh, why we stop here just make another copy of it just make one more maybe one more maybe one more I don't know where is the upper limit of this uh, technique and I still can move freely in the scene and oh my god looking at the, this uh, it's really fun and quite interesting okay I hope you guys uh, like this technique and uh, please let me know if you do something uh, with this technique using this technique and I will continue showing another approach uh, of the same logics same alembic instance caching system but this time we are not going to use X particle instead we will use cloner object and let's check it out yep this time we have a cloner instead of a X particle system and um, this cloner again I will clone the pyramid object onto the helix object and to create some variation I used random effectors and yeah just gave a 5% uh, rate and to dri drive the clones into a direction and yeah this time instead of a chaotic vortex movement and lot, there, there isn't lots of particles floating around instead they are moving along the path and yeah if if you click bake as alembic uh, we will end up having bunch of clones in here and as it won't be useful like this you know there is oh my god all the clones are here so to overcome this problem I will delete the alembic cache to overcome this problem uh, I will put the cloner under a connect object and I will almost zero down the tolerance and I uh, also 
uh, fong mode will be manual and if we bake it right now as alembic we will end up with a single object as you not if you I don't know did you notice or not but it also baked very fast you know because it's not dealing with the uh, hundreds of clones and instead there is a single connect object we can play with it right now it's the same logic I will let me close this helix etc yeah right now we have again a alembic cache but we can clone it with more graph tools and effectors and maybe ra radial mode and maybe we will uh, don't know hmm, maybe like that and increase the count of it maybe increase the radius of it as you can see it's already start to look kind of interesting and if you play it yay there's the uh, frame per second is around I don't know you can see it or not it's around 200 frames per second right now and the, we, we, we there's no need to stop here and we, we can increase our clone count and radius to achieve uh, some totally different looks and yeah from this point there, there is no any limitation of playing this method because we have the power of all the MoGraph effectors and other MoGraph tools and yeah let me show you some other examples I created while playing with it so yeah this one is a little bit heavy but uh, it's it looks really interesting in my opinion nope. I don't know I can play it oh yeah kinda it's kinda slow but uh, I don't know I found it interesting and hope you guys are enjoy it too and again please let me know uh, if you do something uh, with, with using this setup and I will be appreciate to look at it let's continue then the next thing I want to talk about is vertex map animations driven by X particles. And here I collected some of the example setups from our previous works and yeah, let's uh, dive into Cinema 4D and create the same system. <clears throat> okay, uh, I just quickly modeled that rail track and it's kind of sloppy but I guess it will work for our demonstration purposes. And so let's begin. I will first select all of the faces uh, of my 3D model and I will press V on the keyboard and set vertex weight. The value is zero, which is okay right now. And we created our vertex map. Right now, uh, we need particle system to affect uh, our vertex map animation. So I will create quick uh, X particle system. Everything will be default right now, but we need an emitter. First, so to to create an emitter, I, I will select the outer edge of my 3D model and edge the spline. So we have a spline right now, which is exactly the same profile of the trail track model, and I will <coughs> correct the axis of it to the center, and I will rename it as a um, emitter spline and. I will drag it over the my emitter so things will be uh, much more organized and I will change my emission emitter shape to the object I will drag my emitter spline into the object object section of the uh, X-particle emitter and I want to emit from the edges and yeah let's see okay now it's uh, spreading particles into every direction uh, I guess default is the normal direction yeah for particle direction is normal but we want positive X direction to uh, follow our surface of the uh, our model and like that so and we don't need any uh, follow surface modifier right now because uh, the particles will be just freely flowing on the surface of the model so 
I will decrease the number of the work rate, maybe around 25. And yeah, I will increase the speed of it a little bit, I guess. And also the variation. Okay, it's uh, kind of see the particles right now, but uh, don't worry, it will be really visible in a second. For the create a link between our vertex map and the particles, I will use I will click on the use fields section and default mode will come with the fr fr freeze and the mode of it I will change it to the grow mode and will leave everything at default right now and there is a uh, at the fall of tab of the fields there is a x particle fall of object once you click on it it will create a separate object in the object manager and also it will create uh, another layer over on top of the freeze so uh, once we click on the uh, x particle fall of object uh, there is an it is looking for an emitter and we will give our emitter to it so right now the basically this particle fall off creates a fall off environment around every particle but it's hard to see until you click the show radius right now you can see the radius of the uh, particle fall off and if you check the yes if you check the vertex map, as you can see, it's working. Our particles are affecting our vertex map. So it's kind of useful technique. You know, uh, we can change the object, and it will work exactly the same. Doesn't matter the shape of the object; uh, it will work in any condition. And right now, I will leave everything at default. And oh, okay. <coughs> Since we have a vertex map right now, there is uh, uh, millions of possibilities. But first, I will ch I will choose poly effects, and for the fall off of it, I will drag and drop my vertex map. And yeah, as you can see, nothing is happening because there is ah sorry ah, hmm, I, I did a mistake all right not like that okay for the poly effects first I need an effector I want a plane effector and my effector will affect our polygons scale to the minus one and <clears throat> for the plane effector I want to use a vertex map as a follow-up of the plane effector and Yep, as you can see, it's uh, working as we expected. I will just close, close the show radius option. Right now, it's uh, exactly the opposite. We are aiming and to we want the reveal object instead of deleting it. So uh, at the follow tab of the plane, we will create an invert and voila, it's revealing our object by polygon by polygon based on the vertex map and the vertex map is uh, driven by our particle system and to make it a little bit a little more interesting first I will close this icon in viewport and a little bit more interesting uh, we can add some rotation to the particles I will just right. increase a little bit and maybe like that I will also increase the rotation of the polygons. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess this is uh, okay right now, and because it's more or like depends on your personal taste, and you can also combine uh, other MoGraph tools and manipulate more and create more variation uh, about the polygons. And if you use metal like uh, shiny metal material with it, like I do at my example animation this kind of uh, quick polygonal rotations will be uh, reflect light a lot and kind of looking cool in my opinion and yes this is the basic essence of the animation
All right, to, to see it better, I will just uh, bring our old trusty cloth surface to give it a little bit thickness. Just give it one side. Yeah. And I will also close the particle visibility. And yeah, that's the same basic system I used in almost uh, every scene I showed uh, earlier. And from this point now, I can control the radius of the uh, vertex map animation, so maybe it will be much faster. Let me close this cloud surface, and we can increase the radius, so it will be much faster. Wow, interesting. Oh, sorry. Maybe 20 will be much better. Yeah, seems great. Yeah, it, actually, this this setup is in, in, incredibly easy to build. But the effect is, I really enjoy and seems really organic. And I I hope you will guys find it fun and useful and yeah, this is the essence of the uh, same animations I showed earlier. Okay, that's it. Thank you. I want to talk a little bit about projection mapping shows, what to do, what to not, and uh, some tips and tricks about 3D projection mapping design. And so, the, this project took place in Istanbul at 2018, and one of the most famous landmarks in Istanbul, Galata Tower. Uh, we created this mapping content for the Istanbul Youth Festival's marketing campaign. And I really personally love projection mapping because uh, we usually see our renders on screens, computer screens, uh, mobile phones, etc. But combining motion graphic with the real architectural canvas is uh, amazing feel to experience and uh, I, I love that feeling and uh, walking inside around the cr crowd and seeing the people's uh, reactions and it's, it's really really fun thing to do. Before jumping into the Cinema 4D and breaking down some of the actual scene files used in this projection mapping, uh, I want to show you short part of the experience. Let's watch it first and we will continue. Yeah, this is one of the original scene files we used at uh, Projection Mapping Show. Uh, nothing too fancy or complicated, just uh, Voronoi fracture, sliced up uh, volume, etc. But before moving into details about the animation lighting rendering tips, 
I just to give a little bit more information about the mapping template itself and how we set things up in real world also in 3d environment all right so let's and the first thing we do was technical inspection and we took a photograph and exactly the location of the photograph where, where it is taken uh, was incredibly important because at event night we we will set our projectors exactly at the same location and we, our 3d model was modeled based on this perspective because our shot cam which is locked in here uh, also will match up uh, with the projectors in real world because almost same lens distortion uh, and the same distance we reconstruct 3d uh, version of reality but based on the photograph we took so uh, with, with this setup once we render any animation and project it again on the surface it will closely match uh, our 3d content will almost match uh, onto the surface details you know the uh, edge of the windows and the general architecture details will be almost same and by doing that we create the sense of perception and depth in real experience during real experience all right so about the setup that's insanely basic uh, i just used uh, an inside spline and based on the points of the spline it just breaks up the surface and i used a plane effector which was scaling down the piece of the Voronei and yeah this this is the uh, animation it's, uh, uh, it's kind of simple to show but anyway next I want to talk about the light lighting of the projection mapping shows I always use a very small light source because uh, it, we, with this kind of small light sources we will cast really hard shadows uh, projection mapping is kind of uh, weird thing to work on because let me launch our viewport IPR you will understand what I'm talking about clearly yeah once we look at this render on screen uh, you know it's not that uh, interesting or uh, it's kind of ugly you know the completely black shadows and one part of me tells me that okay you should use global illumination you know this is ugly but that, that's a mistake you mean you should never open a global illumination at projection mapping experiences the small light sources and very contrasty hard shadows almost pure black shadows was a key thing to create depth and illusion and that many people made that mistake uh, while creating content because when they look at their renders they immediately feel like oh I, I should add another light source here because it's too dark it seems ugly but uh, things are a little bit different at projection mapping shows I just want to say that another thing I want to share with you guys is the position of the light source I always use uh, light source is from bottom to up because it will cast shadows uh, on top of the surface you know the surface details will be much more uh, visible and the whole structure will feel much more bigger than it is you know uh, if you if you uh, think about it every architectural especially the historical architectural lighting systems they all always use this technique because this creates a feeling that you are looking something stronger something much more bigger and yeah actually there are lots of other things to talk about projection mappings and today i just highlighted some of the key techniques i use a lot uh, but that's all for me today see you next time and yes Thank you guys for being here with me today and watching my presentation. Hope you enjoyed it as much as I do and learned something new. My name is Orhan Sayın and I'm the director of Cream Studio. 
and you can follow our studio via Instagram or Behance. And yeah, once again, thanks for joining me today. Hope to see you next time.